In this video, I'm going to focus on how we can center the text here. But you might say, and if you look at it, you can see it two different colors because we have two different elements. And then it will be centered here in the center. And then the text will go to the, to the left side while the number value with the additional dollar sign of currency symbol will be going to the right side. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to add multiple text labels in the center of the donut chart in Chart.js. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the default code which you can find on Chart.js3.com getting started. And this link is also in the description box. Scroll down here and just copy this entire chunk of code. Copy that. And if you want to understand what this does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. I'll paste this all in there and then I will cut out the title here and replace the title in there. Save that, refresh. All right, so now we have this. And what I want to do now is to convert this into a nice uh, donut chart. So if I'm going to scroll down here, first of all, I'm going to change the width to 400 pixels. And then I will scroll down here, make this a donut chart. And finally, we're going to remove the scales because the donut chart has no scales. Save that. There we are. So now we have this here. And what I want to do eventually, I want to get, for example, the value here. That will be a different number or a different color. And then we will have also the text in here. For example, if this would be related to sales, we will say 18 sales or sales total of 18, something like that. And the sales text will be different compared to the number text. So let's start to do this. To do this, we must have a plugin. So we're going to create a custom plugin. We're going to have a plugin here. And we can give this what I would say here is maybe multiple text multiple uh, text in center something like that i'm just making it up you can give anything uh, maybe this is too descriptive it's too much or center text maybe that's better center text all right so then what i want to do here is i want to say a constant center text and i will say this will be our center text plugin constant center text equal 30 braces and then what i want to do here is say id I'll just do it identical with center text. And then next, what I want to say here is when will we draw the text? And I would say if we have here the data sets being drawn after the data set, we can put the text in the center there. That will be fine. So we're going to say here after data sets draw. And then here we're going to get the parameters. And basically, we only need the chart, but I'll just use all three of them as a option or at least as a a default default habit of mine so because we're not going to use options and this so i will ignore this one however we will focus on the chart of what we need to do now is we call a object destructuring and this in in essence means you get an object because these three are all objects and then what i want to do is i want to split out the objects that it contains in here so we can use them as a shorthand so for example if you go chart there was a chart.cpx but i don't want to use it like that that's too too cumbersome or too long what i want to do is just instead just use ctx i'm referring to this so to do that we need object destructuring so i'm going to say a constant this constant will be curly braces equals chart so we have here the object and then we're going to destructure the object and say ctx here and then what we also need is the chart area comma uh, column and then here what we will have is left right top bottom with height so you might not use all of them but having all of them ready is just easier for me of course you can remove the ones once you know which one you don't need and then just to be more concise so what we're going to do now is we have now this we're going to say ctx.save and what i want to show you here for example what is exactly here the chart area well the chart area is basically the area where the chart is being drawn in and i'm not talking about a canvas but you can see here we have here a legend this legend space is basically not part of the chart area. Just below that, that is the chart area. So for example, I want to know what is the top. Because basically what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the height of this. And then we divide that by 2 to get in the center. So what I will do here is basically the following. I'm going to go here and I have to calculate, of course, what is the difference then between this and then calculate here. All right, so sounds all very complicated. But if I just show you, for example, here, console log. I'm going to say here left, or sorry, not left, top. 
And if I save this now and refresh, open up developer tab, what it really says is the following, 54. 54 would mean, you can see here, this is the height is 400. 54 would mean that it will go down 54 pixels and this is the starting point here somewhere, basically in here. So that would be like a line here and that's basically what we're doing here. So let's go and if you want to go really deep in this, watch my video about how to uh, understanding chart chart area in chart yes. This is very important to watch. Anyway, what I'm going to do here now is the following. Let's start to basically create two texts and what I want to do is I want to put one text on the left side and the other text on the right side. So the, the sales text will be on the left side and the value will be on the right side. How to do this? Well, first of all, we need to draw, of course, text. So we're going to say here, um, CTX, and we say here, dot font, and equal. And here we can select any text we want. What I will do here is I'll say here, bolder, to make the text a bit bold. Secondly, I will say here, this will be a 30 pixel font size. And then we have the font family, Aria. So now we have this. And then once we have this, what I want to do here is I want to say here CTX and then we say fill style. And what is this basically is the color. And then this will be the color of the font. So what I would say here, well, just for the sake of it, it would make sense just to get, for example, this item here. Let's copy this, put it in there. All right. Then once I save this, we're not done yet, of course. Then what I need to do is basically the text. And let's put in here just a very simple text. So I'm going to say here CTX. And then if you wonder what is CTX, well, CTX is referred to this and refers to drawing something on the canvas, which is basically this specific canvas with this ID name, and it will draw something. And you will see here later on, once we save it and refresh, you will see it will draw. So what I will say here is the uh, fill text, meaning we're going to write now the text. And basically, the text will be this. Uh, we can just say here, uh, sales, I'll just make it like that. And it should be sales, maybe column, that will be it. And then what I want to do here is the next value, which would basically be the X and Y variable. So what is the starting point? So what I want to do is I want to put it eventually in the center. Well, for now, what I will say is I'll just make this 100 by 100. However, if you refresh here, you can see here, all right, this works. And it's on top of these segments here. And the reason why it's on top is because we selected here after data set draw. We could do here also before, but we get maybe an undesirable effect. And then you can see here before, but you can see it is now slightly grayed out because the background color is transparent. If I make the background color is solid, you can see here it doesn't show at all anymore. So that is basically the difference with before and after. So that's why I go back, put it on after, save, refresh. All right, so now we're on top of it. But what I want to do here, what is really important, is basically going here. So how do we get here? Well, remember, let's look at this here. We have the canvas, and canvas is 400 in width and 400 in height. But we had here the top. At least it starts somewhere here. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the exact position here in the coordinates. That is not 200, but I can show it to you. So let's put it here 200 by 200. So we assume this would be the perfect center. All right, you can see here. A few things. First of all, it's not properly aligned in the center because of this, because it's alignment of right, of a, uh, left, sorry. So let's convert that. We say here, ctx.text align. And then we say here, center. Very similar to a CSS style, like left, center, uh, right. There we are. So now it's in the center. It looks beautiful. But of course, one thing is here not correct. And what is not correct is basically it's not down enough. It's not in the center center, or at least it is in the center center of the canvas, but not of the chart area. So what we need to go here is go down more. What is then the difference here is basically the 54 pixels. So if I give this plus 54 pixels, it will go down. So I can say here, if we do plus 54, it should be now uh, almost in the center. Sorry, it's supposed to be, but of course it's not. So Let's see, we have to play around with that. So how do we do this? Uh, of course, it's, it's not like that, sorry. So first of all, we have the, uh, where is that? We have the, the uh, width, that's this one here, which is 400. So I'm going to grab this, it will be here, but then I say 400 divided by two, save that. 
All right, we're still in the same position. And then what I want to do here is we might say, all right, we just need to have the height divided by two. Save that. All right, it goes up here. But what I really want to do is not the height divided by two, but also plus the top, which is 54. So if I do this, plus 54, uh, sorry, not this, plus top, save that, refresh. Now we are, let's remove that. All right, now we are properly in the center. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now is maybe what would be uh, very logical is to make this donut ring a bit more narrow, just for the for the view. So I'll say you cut out, and the cut out percentage will be, let's make it 80%. Save that, refresh. All right, so now we have that. You can see it's nice in the center. But what I want to do, I want to push this here. Basically, I want to go in here, and then I want to have another text at the other side. So how do we do this? Well, we have here this. Right now we have this here, and we have here now the RGBA color of red. All right. So then, set my column here, I'm going to say CTX. Let's say CTX.restore to restore all the values and undo whatever we have above. Then I'm going to copy again. It's going to make another one here. And this one will be exactly the same, except this one will be a different color. So I'm going to grab this color here. Put it in there. Make this a solid one. Save that, refresh. All right, so now you can see it's become blue. Why? We have now basically two things, but they're exactly on top of each other. So that will mean that there's a layer on top, and I don't want that. So what can we do here? Well, you see here the text align. What I'm going to do here now is, for example, this one, I'm going to say text align right, meaning I refresh here, and then let's close that. Refresh here. It will go in the center. It pushed the center line here, and then everything at the right side of that center. So if I do here, text align uh, left, it will start from this left point and starts on like that. So now we have it like this. So basically we have now two texts here nicely matching with each other. And what we can do now is, for example, I want to grab the values. So how do we do that? Well, basically, we're going to do exactly the same here on, uh, well, uh, this, uh, what is that? Sorry, I'm looking for the text here. This text must be eventually extracted from our data here. So that's what we need to do now. So how will we do this? Well, basically, we're going to first indicate what will be our text. So we have this one is here, fine, but this one is dynamic. So to do that, I need to get something more specific. So I'm going to say here, and we're going to create a well, let's do a console log first and just say here chart. I'm going to remove this one here because I'm going to show you how you're going to grab the specific item there. All right, console log. Let's see what's going on here. We get an error syntax unexpected on 99. Uh, oh, of course. So, what I want to get here is the 18, but of course, this is like this $18. But of course, we had no things. So you get it here, but you see it's not 100% in the center. And this is on purpose, basically, because if you have it like this, you could push this down as well, if that would be more desirable. Many things are basically possible. But for now, I will just focus on this. I'll make a separate video, by the way, to push this all exactly in the center center, and the colors are still matching correctly. But that's a different video. I'll show it at the end. So what I want to do here is basically this. I want to grab here the value of this, which would be dynamically of our item here. And then what I want to do eventually is we don't need so many of these. We even don't need all of this. This one should be transparent because I want to hide the specific one. And then we can just do this, put it all in there. Save that. All right, so you can see here now we get the legend. And you notice here the legend. And then basically what I did was with the left and the top, or sorry, with the top, was to calculate the legend difference. However, imagine you say, well, hold on, I don't want to have the legend. I'm going to say here, let me show you this plugin. Let me say here legend. And we say display equals false. Save that. Refresh. And you can see here now it moves nicely to the center here. The center line is being reached nicely. So it will be dynamic. So what I will do here is the following. Let's get the value out of it. So if I click on one of this, and this is basically from the console chart. 
I'm going to scroll down here and you will find eventually here somewhere the data. It's the data object here. And this data object here has what we call our data set. And then, uh, or in, in, yes, this is the one, the data set. We only have one here. Then we can click here on the data. And this is basically the one we need. So to do this, I need to go here to data the data sets index zero. We only have one because we're going to only extract. We only have one uh, data set here because it's specifically one data set. And then what I want to grab is only the first one and not the second one. So we only get the first one here. So we're going to say here dot data and then index zero. So we don't have to do anything fancy because by default it's like that. So if I save this and refresh, you're getting now a specific value. So the value is in here. So what I can say here is the following. I'll just say very simple. I'll make a constant. I'll say text equal that. All right. And what we could do here is uh, eventually what I want to do is a dollar sign as well. So what I can do is a concatenation. I'll say here dollar sign this plus concatenate whatever the value would be. Copy this. Convert that in here. Save that. Refresh. All right, so now we have this and maybe say, well, hold on, this looks hideous because we should have maybe a space between there. You're absolutely right. Let's make a space in there. Uh, let's put it in there like that. And there you are. So we have this here and you can see we have this transparent item with the uh, tooltip. Let's remove the tooltip as well. Uh, in here, comma, let me say a tooltip. You need plugins. So we tooltip. And then the tooltip will be enable equals false save that refresh all right that looks nice now I hover over it so this is absolutely beautiful and of course if i change this let's say this would be now 99 and this is only one like 99 percent there we are so this is basically the way you can add up two colors and basically what we really did was adding two different texts in here so we can color them individually and of course, you can play around with positioning, but I have different, I'll make a separate video for that. So if you like this video, I will have another video popping up on the screen. And that video will be specifically where we put this really in the center. Because maybe you're like me and you say, well, hold on. This is not really 100% in the center. Because if this text is long, it will be more stick out here. Well, this one stays here. And it would be more logical to have it 100% center center with both of the text. I have a special video for that. You can see the video popping up here. We'll show you exactly how to do that.